Well, welcome back to the Walk as Jesus Walk podcast series. In today's message, uh, the focus is going to be on the difference between simply knowing who Jesus is as opposed to having a true personal relationship with him. Kind of like we know famous people, we know popular people, people who we've heard of, and some of them we know really well because we spend a lot of time getting to know about them. Uh, and we follow them and we look to find out what they're doing, what they like and what they don't like. Um, just check out social media. That's what it's all about. And yet, the truth is, is you don't know those people at all. Not like the way you know a family member or a friend or somebody you work with. With those folks, you actually have a personal relationship. You don't have a personal relationship with somebody who you know a lot about. Now, you may think you do, but truth be told, that's not a personal relationship. Let's say you really do want to establish a personal relationship with someone else, anyone. Would you seek to learn about them from other people or just reading about them? Wouldn't you engage directly with that person and get to know them? So that kind of lays the foundation for the difference between knowing who Jesus is and knowing a lot about him and personally knowing him. Sadly, today, most Christians, uh, Bible-believing people who go to in the institutionalized church system, they simply follow the beliefs that they gain through the teachings at their local church, from their pastor, or self-reading and interpreting from the Bible. In fact, the greatest focus isn't on getting to know Jesus better. It's on Christian living, being a good Christian, doing the things. And so, you know, you have this little agenda list, and if you're doing those, hey, you're living a life that's pleasing to God. That's exactly what the Jews thought. However, most of these people who are doing this have no personal relationship with Jesus. Therefore, in the end, because they remain nothing more than part of this world and its system, they don't belong to the kingdom of God. The greatest problem within the dilemma here is that practicing Christians, they don't even realize what that word means, Christian. The term Christian means to be Christ-like. In other words, to be like Jesus. They fail to go to the source. If you really want to know how Jesus walked, because you're expected to walk as he walked, then you go to him. The Jews, they thought they knew God, and they were living a righteous life as far as they were concerned. That was until Jesus came on the scene, and he let them know that their way, the way that they were living, was not the way that was designed by God. So they had their own way of living. Today, we have many people who make up their own way. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And unless you come to him and go through him, you have nothing, not from a spiritual standpoint, not from God's standpoint. So the Jews had nicely created and adopted their own religion, had all kinds of man-made laws and practices, and they used these laws to measure how pleasing their lives were to God or to judge whether or not they weren't living up to these practices, these laws. They challenged Jesus and his disciples many times. Hey, your your guys aren't doing what you know, you know is expected of a Jew. And Jesus said, don't worry about them. They're with me. And so Jesus was introducing a very different way of living, not practicing laws and not practicing ways to measure whether your life is pleasing to God. He was teaching to have a personal relationship with me. That's what he had said. Don't worry about them. They're with me. So as I shared in the introductory podcast, Jesus told them, you you know, you pour over the scriptures because you presume that by them you possess eternal life. However, these are the very words that testify about me. Jesus said, yet you refuse to come to me and have life. That's in John chapter 5, 39 and 40. Well, I think it's clear that Jesus told the Jews 
simply knowing and memorizing the scriptures, which was the Bible of their day, doesn't bring anyone closer to God, just as it doesn't today. When people just simply read the scriptures, they think the Bible is God, because it, it's God's word, and it tells me everything I need to know and do. That's not what Jesus taught. That's what you're hearing and learning if you are part of the institutionalized church. So reading and, and getting to know this doesn't bring you any closer to God. It doesn't produce righteousness, and it does not offer eternal life. And so we know that Paul clearly wrote to us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 through 17, that all Scripture is God-breathed. It's useful for instruction, for conviction, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete. No, we, we can't look past this. The man of God, God's man or woman, who God chose. Not we choose him and we choose to do these things to please him, but God chooses us. And once we become the man or woman of God, then all scripture is there for conviction and correction and training in righteousness. For the man of God, we've made complete, fully equipped for every good work. Now that is an accurate reading and interpretation of what Paul wrote. However, these verses are intended for those who are truly in Christ, spiritually reborn, and having the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, living within them. Now, this is the very connection, the Spirit of Jesus living within someone that bonds with their spirit, and that supplies the conduit needed for spiritual growth. So then without having the Spirit of Jesus living within you, you don't have the conduit, you don't have the spiritual growth. What you have is an intellectual growth from a cognitive standpoint. You can read, you can study, you can interpret, but yet this isn't coming from God. This is coming from a human mindset because no spiritual growth can happen without the Spirit of Jesus living within us. So the spiritual growth does not simply come from reading, studying, and interpreting the Bible, as many will tell you that it does. Now, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Jesus is our advocate when we're in Christ. But he said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. That's the spirit of truth. That's where truth comes from, not from interpretation and trying to figure it out and arguing and making apologetics and all this stuff that you see out there. Truth doesn't come from that, but we think somehow or another it does because that's human thinking. But when you are spiritually growing, you realize truth can only come from the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And then he continues, Jesus says, the world cannot receive him because it can neither see him or it does not know him. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth. So all these people who make the claim, all you got to do is come to church and you'll have the spirit of truth. That's not true. That's not what Jesus said. Now, if we want to walk as Jesus walked, we need to understand we must walk by the truth. And Jesus is the truth. So he said that but you do know him because he was talking to his disciples who were sitting right in front of him. And he said, you do know him for he abides with you, meaning I am right here with you and will be in you. This was his promise. This is prophetic. After Pentecost, then all those who he chooses, he will send the advocate to come to live within, and the Spirit of Jesus will live within them. He said, I will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you, 
in a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. In other words, the world won't recognize Jesus once he ascends to heaven, but you will because I will come to you and live within you. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. On that day. Now, that day is here. Whenever we surrender our lives to Christ, and he transforms us, then we will be placed into the body of Christ, and the Spirit will come to live within us. He says, I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them. A lot of people have his commandments. Go look at any church and you'll find where the commandments are. They talk about them all the time. But it says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. So if we want Jesus to reveal himself to us so we can get to know him personally, then we really truly need to have the love of the Father in us. It can only come in spiritual transformation. Again, Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 7 through 15, but I tell you the truth, it is for your benefit that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. So he's telling them the advocate that I'm promising won't come to you if I don't leave. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regards to sin, because they do not believe in me. And guess what? If you don't have the Spirit, then you are convicted. Anytime righteousness is around you, you feel convicted. This is why the world hates why they hated Jesus, and why they hate those who are in Christ. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. And in regards to judgment, because the prince of this world, the adversary who built the religious systems that are out there, the prince of this world, he's been condemned. I still have much to tell you, but you cannot bear to hear. And Jesus is saying, right now, you're, you've got enough on your plate. You won't be able to take everything I have to tell you. However, Jesus doesn't leave it there. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, that means once we are born again and he comes to live within us, he will guide you into all truth. Who will guide us into the truth? Do we need mankind to guide us into the truth? Do we need a church to guide us, a doctrine, the Bible? No. He said, that the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own. He will speak what he hears. He will declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me by taking from what is mine and disclosing it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said that the spirit will take from what is mine and disclose it to you. Wow. Jesus is making promises that he's keeping because today there are few, but yet there are people around the whole world who are in Christ, who are serving his kingdom, and he is living within just as he promised. The apostle John wrote, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, We have an advocate before the Father, Jesus Christ. There you go. We have Jesus as our advocate, and we have another advocate, the Holy Spirit that lives within us. And Jesus is the righteous one. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So if we sin, we go and seek forgiveness. And not only for ours, but also he died for the sins of the whole world. Now, whether or not they will listen to the calling, and be chosen, well, that's between them and him. That's why it's a personal relationship. By this, we can be sure that we've come to know him. We have that personal relationship. If we keep his commandments, if anyone says, well, I know him, and we have many people who do, but they do not keep his commandments, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The spirit doesn't live within him. Because he couldn't lie like that, 
he would be seeking to keep those commandments if the spirit of Jesus was living within him. But if anyone keeps his word, and a lot of people think, well, his word is the Bible. No, keeps his word, meaning everything that he speaks into our hearts, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. Whoever claims to abide in him, and many people do, but whoever does must walk as Jesus walked. That's in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Then in 1 John chapter 2, 24 through 27, John wrote, As for you, let what you have heard from the beginning remain in you. The good news, the gospel, it's what you should be living, is for the kingdom of heaven to serve Jesus each day picking up your cross and following him. If it does, you will also remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he himself made to us, eternal life. Eternal life doesn't come from praying some prayer and following some rules and saying, okay, now I'm going to heaven. This is such an atrocious lie that it's blasphemous because that's not what Jesus taught. And John continues, I have written these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. Now, as for you, the anointing, the Holy Spirit you receive from him, remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. You want to know the truth? Go to the source. Go to Jesus. But just as his true and genuine anointing teaches you about all things, so remain in him as you have been taught. Now, Jesus is not dead. You'd almost think so because the church doesn't go to seek. Now, I'm talking about the institutionalized church. doesn't go to seek to have that personal relationship with Jesus. He's not dead. And his earthly ministry is not dead either. When he died and was resurrected, he didn't stop his earthly ministry. He continued it through his living body. Those who are in him, the church, the real church, the church, not some church system. So it's not through the Christian religion of today. Jesus uses his true disciples who serve his kingdom to do his work while we're here on earth. And he will do so until he returns. Now, this earth is no longer the home of those who are truly in his body. As those who are in Christ, well, they've turned from their world surrendering, you know, things, everything in their lives to follow Jesus. They've turned away from this world. Their plans, their dreams, their passions, their bucket list, etc. So they can humbly and faithfully serve the Lord according to his will and his good purpose. Well, this type of life just is not possible for anyone who lacks an authentic personal relationship with Jesus. Therefore, these folks who don't remain or do not have a personal relationship, they remain in the world, separated from God Almighty. The institutionalized Christian church system cannot transform a single soul. Jesus alone is the one who can do this. Knowing the scriptures, doing good in this world, and cleaning up your lifestyle but it's just not going to save your soul. Choosing to continue false teachings instead of Jesus. We can follow one or the other. You can't follow two. You cannot have two masters. Jesus could be your only master. So choosing to continue to follow those teachings will only leave people destined for eternal separation because it leads them down the broad path that leads to destruction that Jesus mentioned. Thus, in closing, it is essential everyone who claims to abide in him to walk as Jesus walked. And that is only possible for those who have a real, true, personal relationship with him, Jesus. God bless you all.